Hi and welcome to the Dublin Poker Festival of 2016 here at the wonderful Fitzwilliam Card Club in Dublin. We started with 218 players at 440 euros of a buy-in and a prize pool of 90,000. 30,000 going to the eventual winner and the much coveted trophy of the Dublin Poker Festival Championship of 2016. Poker players from all over the world turned up, professionals and amateurs alike, with the hope of claiming the top prize. Welcome to the Poker Festival at the Fitzwilliam 2016. Let's hand you over to our wonderful host, Miss Karis. Welcome to Dublin, Ireland for the 2016 November Poker Festival at the Fitzwilliams Casino and Card Club. We're here at Ireland's leading venue for a real extravaganza of club poker. This year's version of the annual Poker Festival promises to be the most exciting and the biggest to date. And it's a really international affair as well. Over 15 nations are represented among the players. So, will this year's champion be from Ireland? Stay tuned to find out. Paddy Clark here at the table. This is Paddy Clark here, Ken. He's a, a former Irish champion. He won the Irish Open a few years ago, and uh, in fairness to him, has gone on to prove uh, since then that it was absolutely no fluke with some uh, big results elsewhere. Okay, what have we got here? 9 10 Jack and a King on the Flop here, a queen it, would be perfect for either of these players. Well, well th this is a, an interesting board because uh, th th there's a possible straight out there. Uh, Paddy's called the bet here on the turn. And another king on the river. Which, even if you do have the straight, it slows you down a little bit, isn't it? Well, it hasn't slowed this guy down. <laughs> uh, if he doesn't have the straight, this is pretty gutsy. He may be holding a king in his hand. And a bit reluctant at the queen, obviously, but it's a big size bet into him. Well, Paddy's having a good think here. I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have the queen, but I, I, I could practically guarantee you he's got a king. Ace 10 against <laughs> Ace King, you were correct. And Paddy Clark takes it down, and a, quite a sizeable pot. Well, it was a, it was, it was a very good see bet and a, and a good call from Paddy, who seemed to know where he was. Uh, yeah, well, the fact that it's going to be out on TV and we're going to get to look back and see how you, how you performed, if you make it that far, obviously. And um, I, actually, I actually haven't played once before this, so I'm actually looking forward to trying to try go deep. I mean, I, I play up here all the time, so it's... Everyone knows everyone basically, so it's like a home feeling. Like. Now let's have a little bit of okay. luck. Okay, man informed Lee Egan has raised this pot. Uh, Adrian O'Donoghue, known affectionately by himself as the Pet Shot Boy, uh, has moved all in with the Queens. Uh, he's been snapped off by Lee uh, with, with, uh, with a bad ace. Lee has hit the ace and uh, Adrian's going home to, to his pets uh, with a bad beat story. <laughs> I don't want to see him for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at another big hand that happened here with our former Irish Open runner-up. Yeah, Paul Carr, I finished running up in the Irish Open um, four or five years ago. Hasn't stopped talking about it since. <laughs> it's a raise, a re-raise, and it's all went in. He's got oh, the bullets God, against Ken, the ladies. This is a train crash that was just <laughs> waiting to happen. Uh, this guy is... I mean, this is what poker is all about, you know. 
it can break your heart. I mean, yeah, yeah. nobody's done anything wrong here. This guy's picked up two queens and run straight into Paul Carr with the aces. Only a queen was on the river would save him. Wow, unlucky. And Paul Carr picks up a wonderful double up there. And plenty of chips to play with now. So after a couple of days play in a packed Petroleum card club, we were down to 27. And Karis Scott cut up with Porrick Parkinson for a little chat. I'm here with our lead commentator, Park Parkinson, popular Irish poker pro, also was a main event World Series of Poker final tableist, lots of accolades. Now you're here, we're at the main event for the Fitzwilliam Card Club. It's been an interesting couple of days, and you've been here. I know you played this one as well. We're not going to talk about how it went. <laughs> it I, want to talk well. about, I want to talk about how it went. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's it been like in the last couple of days for the atmosphere? It's been fantastic. You know, I've been out of the country for 20 years, as you know, so this is the first time I've been able to play this event, and it's it's just absolutely brilliant because it, it's kind of uh, it's where the pros meet the, the club amateurs, mm -hmm. like Adam. Like when I say amateurs, I mean I'm not meaning that they're amateurs. I'm just meaning that they have jobs. Right. <laughs> it doesn't mean they're not top players. Yeah. And just at that kind of a buy-in level, um, of like 440, it's it's big enough for the top pros in Ireland to want to play it, and it's um, accessible, uh, e maybe even by satellite to the normal club players who are the, the backbone and the mm -hmm. life and soul of Irish poker. So there's been a great um, mixing between them, and. Uh, you only have to talk to, uh, like one of our um, last 27 today is, you know, Andy Black uh, rather well. Andy went to great lengths to tell me that he's the reigning champion. <laughs> and uh, just to hear him buzzing about the mm -hmm. thing, I mean, that's what it means to the pros to win, you know, sort of their home event in their home club. You know, um, all the bragging rights for the years. And if Andy could win it two years in a row, uh, I'm going back to Paris because yeah. I'm not going to listen to it. We'd never hear the end of it. If, no. If Andy won this two years in a row, we'd never hear the end of it. So, I mean, it would be good, though. It would be a good story. And there's some other really interesting names on the final 27. We've got the list there. Play has not yet started for this day. So, you know, who kind of stands out to you? I'd rather be doing the predictions after we knew who was two. But, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, the chip leader, Lee Egan, I would have mentioned him anyway, uh, mm -hmm. no matter how, because he's a guy that's a very nice lad, and he plays in the club all the time, so it'd be great, and he's uh, he's having a very successful year. How, I don't know, sorry, Lee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he's winning tournaments all over the place. Yeah. He's, uh, he's certainly not afraid to put a, a chip into the pot, and he'll be well worth watching. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, though. There's 30k for first. I mean, that's a lot for this buy-in level. That's a nice big chunk of money. So, what, what do you kind of expect from the players as we're getting down to the money? Everyone's in the money at this point, but when we're getting towards the big money, do you think it's going to be slow, fast? What do you think we might see? I think uh, you'd probably find what you'd expect to find a lot of the time that uh, the pros will uh, will be trying to win. And perhaps you know, f for some of the players um, who are just you know club club players, you know, like I don't know the normal prize pool here, and uh, you know on a Tuesday night might be you know twenty seven hundred or mm -hmm. something, you know, with uh, eleven hundred for the winner. So obviously those players are going to be taking a much closer look at the uh, jumps in the, in the prize money. So if we're looking at it in terms of global poker, um, usually women are only like three, maybe five percent of the field, and we have four women left in the final 27. Is that something that you would expect to see? It's something I'd expect to see in Ireland because um, there's always been a, an awful lot of women playing poker in Ireland. So they're going back to the, you know, the draw poker days where they used to play these tenor tournaments out in Cara or someplace on a, on a Friday night and it, the field would be predominantly women. Right. And uh, when No Limit Hold'em, uh, you know, and all the clubs in Dublin, like the Fitz and the, the other ones, um, and we're running tournaments every night, they were heavily populated by women, like way more than you'd expect to see anywhere else. So, um, and some of them did very well. Like, I mean, a lot of, uh, the Irish Open champions were, were women. I mean, you almost joined them a few years ago. So close. You know, Colette Doherty has won two. Um, Jenny has won one. Irene Tear won one. You know, yeah. so, but the whole history of Irish poker is about um, a lot of women coming into play. And, and it probably, it's probably bears great testimony to how much fun playing poker is, that the women can come in. And believe me, I mean, they don't, um, 
that dog coy. I mean, you know, just, <laughs> as you know, like there's That's an true. awful lot of banter at the yeah. table in Ireland. But the women come in and they, they, they're, they're, they're worse than the guys. <laughs> but they come in, I mean, there's, it's so much crack. Yeah. It's a very social evening out for them. You know, they can come and play a poker tournament here for 30 or 40 euros with, with the expectation of maybe getting a few quid at the end of it. So I'm not in the least bit surprised that there's still four ladies left out of the mm -hmm. 27 because they're supposed to be. Yeah. And I'm hoping a couple of them make the final table. Yeah, me too. And they're enjoying it as well. And honestly, there is something to be said, and I'm a big advocate of having fun when you're playing poker. And it's been great to see here at the club where people are really just enjoying themselves. And I mean, the money doesn't hurt, and uh, that, that can also be a lot of fun. And actually, I think everyone's really excited to get started. So I'm gonna send you over to the commentary booth with Ken, and you guys are gonna talk us through all the action. And uh, this is exciting. Let's see what happens in the final 27. <laughs> So welcome to the future table, and of course uh, there's a very famous Irish poker legend and the black champion last year here in the Fitzporrick, and of course fifth of the World Series. Fifth in the World Series in 2005, and I'm not the only one uh, that was surprised that he didn't take it down. He was certainly playing well enough to, but sometimes, you know, at, in these big occasions you, you need a bit of luck. Yeah, lots of good players here at our feature table, and of course Andy will probably be the most uh, renowned and most prominent. You know, uh, Andy Black is the reigning champion, Ken, and uh, I, I know exactly how much this would mean to him. I mean, with all his other great accomplishments, you know, winning your own club championship two years in a row. Uh, it would be a phenomenal achievement and uh, he certainly looks focused today, doesn't he? Yeah, and particularly with the standard as well that we've seen over the last couple of days. Taking down the pot there with 10-9, two pair against the A7, so a good start for Andy Black. Ten seven four two hearts. Reasonable. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, reasonable flop. <laughs> Typical poker players, they're all talking about a pot they lost last week or last <laughs> year or, or, or back in the noughties. There's always a bad beat story, isn't there? Yeah. Nobody ever tells you about a pot they won. <laughs> That's true. Now being here, ah, he picks up a nice pair of jacks here, 8,000 to call. And he goes all in with his jacks. Let's see if he finds a caller. He'd like to double up here, of course. Not too much of a stack, just 88,000. Well, he's asking a serious question here. It's, uh, it was 8,000 to call, he's moved in for 88. And, uh, uh, bit of a decision here for this guy whose name I can't pronounce. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, I would say. But, uh, pocket trees? Pocket trees, but, he, but uh, the clue here is that he's got a 300,000 stack. He's got 8,000 in already, and he's decided to let them go. I think that was uh, fair enough. At best, he was going to be in a race. Andy Black, always full of chat, no matter what table he's at. Chat, is that what they call it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call it, yeah. Well, he's always the most talkative poker player I've ever seen, and anyway. I'd yeah, say. yeah, but, but no, Andy's always looking for reads on guys and uh, looking for how guys. Would, uh, sometimes, if you get guys talking, uh, you, you can gauge quite a lot by their reactions when they pick up their hands. Re-raised to 50,000. And Davidas with the ace king in the cutoff has gone all in for 300,000 against Andy's ace queen and the ace eight from Nabeen. Paul with pocket sixes. Big decision. <laughs> I don't think it's that big a decision. <laughs> the three guys have told him that they don't, don't care sixes. about his pocket sixes. Yeah. Interesting. He is enough, ahead. He is ahead. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you've got to figure out you're ahead, and then you've got to figure out how to stay there. I think, um, so 250,000 to call for Andy. Ace-queen suited against the ace-king suited. 
out of a stack of fat, 560 left. Big decision here for an Andy. Mm. Big pot if he does call. And he's probably hoping that he's, he's racing against an under pair. You know, with a raise and then a re-raise from Andy. Uh, and then the raise behind from the ace king. It's a, it's a tricky spot for Andy. Um, Andy's I'm checking sure, out. I'm sure he's pretty sure he's not in front with the ace queen. I, he, Interesting um, to see Andy there. He's having a look to see is his legs shaking, his opponent's legs <laughs> shaking. So probably around about the best Andy can hope for here is that um, He's in some mind it's, games. It's, it's, he's <laughs> up against a pair of jacks or a pair of tens. And yeah. Good foul to have It's to an excellent foul from Andy, and uh, for once he thought about it and figured it out. <laughs> but you know, Andy's a world-class player. Um, he took a good look at his opponent, figured the ace-queen was going nowhere, and uh, he was right. I'm here with marketing manager Paul Howard. Paul, talk to me about how well this festival has gone and, and you know how happy you guys are with this. We're delighted with this year, Cara. This is the first year we sold out our event. We were oversubscribed for this year's festival. We players from all around Europe come to see us. Um, and we the first year we're on TV, our first big TV year. So uh, our partners Air, uh, Air Sport came on board with us this year and they're broadcasting in December. And we've uh, 888 as online sponsors. That all contributed to help making the festival a big event for us this year. It was a sellout and we're looking forward to building towards next year and making it even bigger again. Tell me what do you think makes the, the Fitzwilliam such a great place to come and play poker? Well, for us and what all our members, it's about the vibe that we have here. We're a friendly club, everyone gets on, it's an entertainment club, people come and know their friends play here, and our amateurs get to play with the pros we have here and you know have the banter as we call it in Ireland. Ireland. And everyone is here to have fun, everyone's here to enjoy themselves, and that's why people come to the Fitz. Thanks so much. Kevin will fold his 6-2 off, as I'm sure Andy will fold his 3-2 off So he can well. never be sure with Andy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's what makes him such a good player. Jerry now on the button with ace-5. Not a bad hand for the button. Oh, no, it's perfect. He's, uh, he'll certainly raise here. Just hoping to get this pot over and done with and pick up the blinds and the antes. Yeah, he duly raises to 61,000. Paul has the same hand, except it's suited, but uh, I can't see him calling here. Nabeen's picked up a nice ace jack suited here. And he's only got 77,000. Uh, there isn't really much of a decision here after the raise has come from the button. Nabeen has shipped it in, and it'll be an automatic call from Jerry here. Yeah, because he's already and, uh, in for 61, of course, so not much more to call. Just another 26,000. And it's a race, ace jack against the ace five. Andy doesn't have to be involved in the hand to get involved in the commentary. <laughs> this is uh, happy days for Nabeen. He just needs to dodge a five. Oh, but there's three hearts on the flop. Uh, any heart will give Jerry the flush and uh, and give Nabeen a broken heart. <laughs> well, the heart doesn't come down on the you. river and... And yeah. Nabeen has hit a straight. Yeah, and a nice little double up and so a little only bit a, more. Only, only a heart to save Jerry here. <laughs> <laughs> it was his own heart he was worried about there. It was ticking quite <laughs> fast there. <laughs> The Fitzwilliam is known as a friendly members card club, but the pros have come out for the main event too. We spoke to them and asked them what they were looking forward to about this tournament the most. Um, the size of the prize pool this year is very attractive. Um, I've missed the tournament the last couple of years, and because of the increasing numbers, uh, it made it very attractive for me to come back and play this. It's a really good game. I know all the players across Ireland, so we're all here. It's a great environment, so I can't ask for much more from over. I know it's a lot of new faces, a lot of young faces up there, all very capable players, so it's a, it's a really good mix, so it's, it makes for a great, great weekend. Mm -hmm. I love that aspect. It's really good, even for the amateurs and the pros, it's a lovely mix. So, yeah, and Dublin's really, it's neutral, everybody gets to come here, and yeah, it's a great place. 
Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's always been a good mix of people in the fits over the years. I've played here many times over the years. I have no idea. I'm renovating our home right now, so maybe a few bob will go into that. But yeah, yeah, you've got to take a holiday. My holiday will probably answer that, so. It'll definitely, I wouldn't say no to 30,000. If, if you have it on your hand, you'll take it off you right now. I'll probably do with all the other 30 grand I own. Uh, I'll probably just blow it somewhere. But, but uh, you know, like for once, and uh, you know, th th this isn't nonsense. For once, I mean, I think, uh, you know, when Tim will back me up on this, and guys like Andy Black, the reigning and champion, it's to be in your own home club. This is, um, you know, th th this is Absolutely. like, I know it's not like the World Series, but I mean, the bragging rights for winning <laughs> this are way more important than the money because, uh, I mean, it'd be fantastic, uh, you know, to win your, to win the event in your home club because if I win it, I'll never show up. There's more to come from the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club right after this. It's all getting a bit tense here now, Ken. Uh, yeah, Andy Black has gone quiet for a few moments. Oh God, don't complain about that. <laughs> Not a bad sign. Well, Lee is here. Uh, Lee Egan, well known for doing a bit of talking himself. But it's getting a little bit tense here. We know we're getting closer and closer to that final table. And, uh, and the shot at 30,000 and the uh, immortality. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the Gerdes finds his bowls is 9 2. So Andy raised it to 32,000. Paul has a look at his Queen 4 suited and 17,000 to call. He makes the call. Some wouldn't. Yeah. Paul isn't one of the sum. Oh, he's hit a very nice flop here for Paul. He's oh my got, God. Uh, this possible could, this straight and a possible flush. Yeah. And Andy's flopped an open ended straight. There could be fireworks here. The only thing that might slow it down a little bit is that uh, there's a straight made already. Paul is check called here. Reasonable enough line. There's several ways you could play the hand. And what a card to come on the turn. A tree of clubs which sets Paul up nicely with a flush. Okay, Andy drawn dead with his Queen nine off suit, but fires out seventy five thousand. Try and pick up the pot. Perfectly reasonable. Mm. Well, Paul is uh, slow playing this to death. <laughs> He's uh, well, he, he probably knows Andy fairly well. Uh, you know, sometimes the best way to play Andy is to throw him a little bit of rope and see if he'll hang himself, which uh, a lot of good players will do. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I like this bet from Paul on the river. Um, Would you be expecting a check again there? Yeah, I'd expect, I'd expect him to, to check and, and give Andy another go at it. But you know, there's several ways to do it. Um, maybe Paul thinks Andy has a little bit of something, as in uh, he's raised before the flop and could have the ace. Well, Andy folds his queen nine off suit, and Paul takes down a nice, sizable pot there. I'm here with the managing director of the Fitzwilliam, David Hickson. David, what makes the Fitz such a great place to come and play poker? I think it's the atmosphere and the people. We have so many regulars who just come in and uh, they're just loyal. Um, they enjoy themselves. Um, they have a great repertoire with the customers. And it just creates a great environment. And I know that the November Poker Festival has been here for years. So what makes this year so special? Well, this year we decided to up the ante a little bit, no pun intended. Uh, we decided we televised the, the final table. Um, obviously, having you here added to the excitement. Um, and we, we reduced the, uh, the, the fee entry. We ran a lot of satellites to make sure more people got into it. Um, and we, we built it up over a three month period. So it became something that was far more exciting than normal. There's lots of people here playing. You guys were oversubscribed, so it's been a great year. Thanks so much. So on the being not for the first time we've seen, has gone all in with his Queen Jack off suit. I wouldn't expect him to be so light, Ken, to be honest, but uh, it's cutsy enough. And he's asking a serious question to Paul with the ace five. Um, I don't think Paul is going to call this. I, I don't think uh, 
<laughs> he thinks the ace five has got much chance of being ahead. Bit surprised with that fold. Nabeen again picking up pocket tens and again pushes all in for all his chip stack. It's 127,000. Gurdas folds the 5 4 suited. Paul is going to fold his 7 4 suited. Carrie, I'm sure, will fold the 9 5 off suit. And around to Lee. Has a look. He's got ace 3, but he's got 1.3 million in chips. Will he call with the ace 3 off suit? He does call. Well, and we have a showdown. Most, he's one of the most aggressive players in the tournament. He's had a very good record over mm. the last um, the last year or so, and particularly in Dublin. He placed in a big tournament in Barcelona recently. But certainly, uh, one of the reasons for his success is he's not afraid to put a chip into the pot. <laughs> he just proved it. Yeah, but he's uh, a big underdog here. Yeah, this is a lovely spot for it. And the bean. He's three against pocket tens. Lee called him so fast. Um, the bean was entitled to think that he was at least up against a couple of over cards and not just one. Lee leads an ace, all right. Oh, and Lee is oh, he's got it. ace on the flop. A jack. On the torn, a possible diamond, possible or, diamond. or ten. Oh, and Nabeen <laughs> lives on with the diamond <laughs> to complete the flush on the river for 276,000. What a hand. I have the poker manager, Denise Rushardi, here with me. What makes the fit so special, I think, especially in this tournament, is the mixture of amateur and pro players. So are they out there just having a great time? It looks like it. That's it. That's it. There is a great mixture. A lot of regulars, a lot of people that couldn't normally play this tournament, they satellited into it. So it's a nice mixture. You guys have really sort of pumped up the festival this year. It's so different from years past. So are you happy with how it's going? Very. Very, yeah, so far, so far so good. <laughs> <laughs> you never can tell. It's a pretty interesting uh, mix of players out there as well. So can you talk to us about some of the names that you have had around here? We have a lot of well, the likes of Andy Black and, you know, that play a lot, of, a lot of these tournaments. But I would say what's left in this tournament is 80% amateur, I would say, at least that have never played a big tournament before. And all of those players have a shot at a 30,000 euro top prize, so it's pretty exciting out there. Thank you very much. <laughs>Paul with Jack Tensuda, nice hand. We'll make a small raise. Raise the 40,000 and Jerry calls an extra 25. Let's see the flop. Well, a little bit for both players here. Jerry's picked up the eight, but of course, Paul has picked up uh, the flush draw. Interesting to see how he plays this. I think Jerry's checked. Yeah. Jerry checks. Paul makes a bet, and Jerry Julie calls. A nine on the torn, which certainly gives. Jerry two pair, but also a possible 
straight draw, open ended and straight draw. draw, and a flush draw. <laughs> he missed. Well, yeah. he missed everything. He looks very happy about it. And a happy Jerry picks up a sizable pot there, three hundred and fifty thousand in chips, and Paul would be very, very disappointed. Lots of options there, of course. There's more to come from Dublin, Ireland, and the main event of the November Poker Festival right after this. Now being with the King 10, who's been passive, but he's passive, had a couple all in. Yeah, he's, he's in the cutoff position here, which is just to the right of the button. This is a, an automatic raise. And, uh, He's good enough to figure that out. And yeah, he raises to 33,000. And he falls his jack six off. But the bird is with ace queen. This is a, a, a definitely re raise here because uh, the raise has come from the cut off. Ace queen is dominating now. Well, a huge amount of the range of the hands of guys. Yeah, surprisingly, he didn't raise, but just called the ace queen. Now, what will Paul do? He's Got two players already in the pot. Pot is up to 128,000. He's going to call with his jack nine off. He sees a bit of value in that. But look at Gary, ace jack suited here. Well, in the big blind. You, you, you could make a bit of a case for uh, for Gary squeezing here. There's a nice few quid in the pot. He may think ace jack should be good here because the ace queen is, is is pretty much disguised here. Mm. You were right, you'd probably lose all the chips here, Kim, with the ace jack. Well, you would anyway. Let's see what he does here. Well, he's three bet now to 95,000. Now, being with a decision to make with King 10 off suit. Well, I like that from Gary. I mean, just because we can see he's behind against the ace queen. The ace queen is uh, pretty well disguised here. You know, sometimes uh, just because you're behind and you make the move, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means you, you can be doing the, 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 um, the right thing at the wrong time. Now we'll go to Gerdes, four bet here. 62,000 to call. May feel he's behind to a pair or a possible ace king here. May just peel off a flop. Let's see what he does. 62k. Well, well, he's taken a pretty conservative line so test. far. I, I, I'd imagine he's probably just going to call. Uh, he may think Gary is squeezing here and then and decide to move all in. I wouldn't think that would be the worst move in the world. God, I could have lost all my chips with any of these hands. <laughs> wow. Big oh fold. My God. Big fold there, and Paul Julius falls, and the squeeze from Gary takes the pot down. Yeah, talking about the ace king, maybe he felt that he was behind to the, an ace king, or even better. So threw away the pot there, but was in, of course, prime position. Now Andy picks up the pair of kings here. He raises to 35. You know, the, the beauty of having the table image that Andy has is, you know, when you're messing around in all the smaller pots, when you do pick up a big hand... Uh, you Nobody know, believes you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the boy who cried wolf. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he cries wolf at the table quite a lot. Cries anyway. King nine suited for Lee here to call at 20,000. 10, six, six on the flop. Yeah, Andy check, check. makes a little check in there. And what about that for a turn? Helps Lee, but <laughs> helps Andy a lot better. Gives him the full house. And that will certainly induce a call from Lee. A nine here would be a bad card for Lee. It is a five on the river. Lee checks his king nine, two pair. What will Andy do here? Well, this is exactly what we were talking about, Ken, that Andy's got such a loose image. Um, Lee is uh, 
very much entitled to believe that his king is good here. You know, if somebody like maybe Nabeen um, was betting out here, um, Lee might think about it, but with, with, with it being Andy, uh, it's almost impossible to throw it away because uh, an, an awful lot of the time you'd be wrong. Well, he's made a big raise of 143,000 and Lee is trying to coax a tell from Andy, but he's not going to get much out of Andy Black here. He's trying anyway. <laughs> There's a bit of table talk going in here. And Lee calls with his King Nine, but Andy shows the two kings and the full house, and he takes down a nice little pot there, 448,000. Very nicely played. We had some familiar poker names make the last 27 and some club members who showed great skill and had a bit of luck in getting this far. Some bad beats, extraordinary feats and plenty of heat combined to ensure day three has had it all so far. The unlucky bubble title landed on Mark Buckley so hard luck to him and after a few hours of quality play we have our final table. In seat one, we've got Andy Black, the defending champion, and uh, arguably a very unlucky loser of the World Championship in 2005, and also almost almost won it in uh, 97. In seat two, we've got Gary Stokes, and uh, unbelievably, he was the winner of the side event at the festival last year. So we've got the two uh, returning champions sitting side by side. In seat three, we've got Sam Bainham. Uh, don't be uh, put off by if you look at his lifetime earnings because uh, I've been watching this guy. He's a very aggressive player, so look out for fireworks. In seat four, we've got uh, Nabin Tapa. He's from Nepal, and uh, that's all I know about him. In seat five, we've got Paul Kyo, uh, a regular cash player in the fits. He doesn't often uh, play tournaments, but uh, I've played enough cash with him to know that he can mix it up. In seat six, we've got uh, the very likeable Lee Egan, a man in form who's shown great form all over Dublin for the last 12 months, so he'll be brimful of confidence. In seat seven, we've got Christine Mashman. Uh, she keeps telling me she's German, but I don't believe it. She's been here long enough to be contaminated. She's more Irish than I am. In seat eight, we've got Kevin Walsh. Uh, he won't be intimidated here. He's got a little bit of a record, uh, but not just in Ireland, but in the UK and America as well. In seat nine, we've got uh, Rachel Samuels, uh, herself and her dad Stuart are very popular members of the Fitz. And uh, if you look at Rachel's record, you'll see that she's a serial final tablist in the Fitz, so uh, she'll know what to do today. I don't know a lot about Nadine, except that he's from Nepal, and I, I'm not even sure if he travelled over especially for this tournament. <laughs> but if he did, I wouldn't blame him. No, he seems to be doing okay. Okay, Andy has a look at a pair of pocket trees. You know, if anybody's under pressure at this table, it's Andy, because he's the guy, he's the defending champion, he's Ireland's leading money winner ever, and mm. he's the guy that's supposed to win, which often makes things, uh, as you know yourself, Ken, it often makes things an awful lot trickier. Yeah, but I and suppose... And that you feel it's yours to lose. I suppose the players as well would be a little bit scared of him. Do you not think he would use his influence and, and all that experience at oh, this I would final imagine table? So. I'd imagine so. Andy's got a great uh, table presence and... Um, can kind of make people make mistakes or freeze. Either <laughs> either's good. <laughs> so Lee calls uh, Sam's raise on the King Jack uh, with 982. That pretty hand. Lee's going to check. He hasn't hit anything on the flop. You'd normally expect a continuation bet in the, in the modern game from Sam here, but uh, he hasn't bothered. But mm. there's nothing An unusual to... check, isn't it? Because it shows a little bit of weakness there. It does, but it... he sort of left the door open for, um, for Lee to uh, come out and have a bluff at it, and no better man to have a go than Lee. <laughs> he's got plenty of gamble in him. Yeah. Plays a good, aggressive game. And of course he's got a decent stack size as well. And he takes that down with a 60,000 bet into a pot that he had none of and he'll be happy with that. Still 10 or 20 and of course a 2K running ante. You know, there's not a huge amount happening so far, Ken, but that's because apart from Andy Black, I mean, who's uh, Ireland's leading tournament player ever, uh, 
Like Nobody else at this final table has has won as much as a third place prize money. So this is huge for the club players. Yeah. So we can expect this to be a little bit tighter little than, bit tight. than you'd normally expect, and that's uh, because you know the jumps pay-wise compared to what a lot of these guys have won over a lifetime are absolutely huge. Yeah. The ninth place will get eighteen fifty. The winner gets thirty thousand. But there's a lot of real good money in between. So yeah, you can understand them being a little bit tight. But we've got a nice hand here. Christian's woke up here with a pair of pocket nines uh, to Gary's ace jack. Gary was pretty short stacked there with 235, so uh, ace jack is, looks pretty big when you have 235. And, but Christine is well aware of it and makes the call with the nines. Yeah, absolutely, instant call here. This hand kind of plays itself most of the time. Yeah. <coughs> and it's just down to uh, a little bit of a race. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a race, so let's see the flop. You know, sometimes everybody does everything right and then you just have to sit back and let the dealer sort it out. That's, it's a bit like sitting in the chair and snooker, isn't it? You, know, you, you can't get up and kick the guy. <laughs> no, that's true. Sometimes luck does play its part. Okay, no nines, no ace or jack on the flop, more important for Christine. Oh, there's oh. the ace on the torn for Gary. He's pretty happy. And a jack. To complete a two pair. <laughs> <laughs> nice little double up for Gary, and he goes up to almost 520,000. Yeah, that was, just a, that was just a pretty routine uh, hand. Everybody did what they had to do. So the button on Paul, Kevin to act for us. He's got Queen 9, he folds Queen 9. Rachel 10 2, that's a fold. Andy with 9 4 will fold as well. Gary will fold with 8 3. I've been with 7-5 off. Now, what will Paul do on the button? He's going to fold his king out. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> and it's around to 2-3 two, two, suited to Lee. He's just going to flat call the big blind. And Christine with 6-7, who's funny enough in the lead. <laughs> Normally you'd see Lee lead out there, but he sort of checked into Christine. He'd probably lead out now on the torn. Now this would be quite interesting, Paul. She's, she's hit the torn after Lee checking the flop. Maybe she sensed that he hasn't hit anything and she might be in the lead here with her six. Oh, she's oh. called. <laughs> she's called with the third pair. <laughs> he was uh, the worst hand he could possibly have. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's just playing the board, but what a runner, runner. And uh, a good call for 35. Christine, it has to be said on the tour. Well, you know, Christine may be German, but I mean, she's been contaminated <laughs> over here for a few years. And she's about as Irish as the rest of us at this stage. Now being folds the ace three, doesn't like that. Five four from Paul, he's gonna fold that Lee. Ace ten off suit, but let's see what he does here. Three, sixty-five. He's raised to sixty-five thousand. And to Kevin with Oh, he's running to Andy here with Ace Queen suited. Oh, we see a little re-raise here from Andy Black. Just a flat call. Interesting choice, Parry. Well, Andy can be a very, very tricky player. Uh, he's very hard to put on a hand. And uh, he's very capable of mixing it up, which is exactly what he's doing here. Well, he's hit the ace. He's hit the queen on the flop with the ace queen. Now, the torn has given Lee possible straight, open-ended straight. And of course he's going to play along. Misses his straight. 125,000 from Andy here.
can't imagine Lee playing black at a man. Andy, you won't see too many players at this table playing back at Andy because uh, Andy just tends to intimidate a lot of guys. And, and Lee's not easy to intimidate, but uh, if there's one guy at the table he won't play back at, it's probably Andy. I tried that myself. <laughs> 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 it didn't work out too no. good. Point taken down. And a decent sized pot as well, almost 180,000. So Rachel on the button here, seat nine, into Nabeen. Oh, and he's woken up with a pair of kings. From what I've seen in Nabeen over the last few days here, Kenny's uh, he's not a man to, uh, to go out walking in his bare feet. <laughs> What would you do here? Would you just uh, flat call and hope for a raise around the table or put in a small raise here, Paul? Well, I think a small raise is pretty standard here. I mean, you, you could limp and, and try and induce um, somebody put a squeeze on behind or something, but... Uh, well, just a small oh. raise <laughs> of well, all in. Well, with Naveen's stack, he's only got uh, 200,000, which is about six and a half big blinds. Mm. So it's... Um, it's happy days to see him pick up two kings. Yeah, fold it around. Well, 191,000 to Andy to call. Well, Andy's already got 30,000 invested in the big blind here, so yeah. yeah. I imagine he'd probably call with the ace nine here because uh, he knows that Nabeen's, Nabeen's range is pretty wide since as he was down to six big blinds. Um, so Andy calls. With ace nine. <laughs> well, a good player at hitting ace here. <laughs> this is one of those situations where everybody at the table is hoping Andy, Andy wins. Yeah. I think it's 1850 for a ninth. But uh, then the prize money starts going up. So I mean, you don't have any friends when you're on. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> the whole table Everybody's wants to see an ace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's ace nine against it. Kings from the bean, Andy with the ace nine. Let's see the flop. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that says that straight point. away. <laughs> Andy was down to two running aces there. But <laughs> that only happens in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> nice double up from the bean there. Be very happy. <laughs> so nice place to pick up pocket kings. It's so easy. What like God you do? The button is on Sam, Naveen, small blind, Paul is the big blind Lee, throws away for us to act, Kevin's going to fold a 6-5 suited, it's folded around to Andy Black who picks up pocket tens. Which is quite a nice hand to be picking up around the back here when you're down to 20 big blinds. And you can play a very disciplined game so far. Which. And the being looks at King 7. I'm sure he'll be folding that. Yes, he does. Now, Paul, what has Paul got? Well, he's picked up the snowman on the big blind. A short call and maybe even a raise. Let's see what well, he'll be aware that Andy's one of the most aggressive players in the country, if not the most aggressive in a, in a tournament um, framework. So, uh, two eights would look pretty big to Paul. And uh, with the stack of two million, when Andy only has 600,000, you couldn't blame him if he, if, if he shoved here. Yeah, so he calls the 32 to see a flop. Now, let's see what's on the flop. Queen eight, oh my God. four. He's hit his set of eights, and I'm sure he's checking to Andy, who will continue betting. Which is perfectly reasonable. Only one over card to his, uh, his tens up there. He doesn't want to be given too many free cards here. He doesn't always walk into a set. Interesting to see what Paul does here. Will he uh, go for the juggler, or will he give Andy another uh, bite of the cherry? Yeah, and of course, Andy. He's gone for a check raise or so. Andy is only one out because the 10 has already been folded at the table. 
So it was a very quick call from Andy. Um, <laughs> I mean, if there's a fault in Andy's tournament game, is that sometimes he um, mm. he doesn't stop to think that extra five seconds because I mean Paul is a, a tricky uh, cash player, but I don't think he'd be messing around with Andy um, of all people. So it would have been quite reasonable to, for Andy to assume that. Um, well, Paul is about 225. Andy has gone over the top, all in 436. He's only got one out. He can only hit 110 on the river. It's not there. It's a tree. And Andrew Black, one of the most successful professionals in Irish poker, has Good gone out to a set of eights from Paul Kill. You've got to give him credit. It was a great defense of the title. I know how much he wanted to win this. <laughs> uh, but I, I oh, think when, uh, if, if, when uh, on, on mature reflection, uh, Andy would like to play that hand again. So Andrew Black goes out, a great defence of his title, and now he's gone off to try and explain that <laughs> to Kara Scott. The best of luck to Andy. We've lost Andy Black <laughs> off of the final table. It's such a shame as well. Last year's champion, but not going to be doing a repeat here. Talk to us about what happened up there. Well, you know, in all these years, I've never blown up. It never. Never, until that moment there. <laughs> like that, I think that might have been the first mistake I've made in 30 years. Is that going to haunt you? It would haunt me. Well, I mean, 29 <laughs> years, uh, 11 months and five days without a mistake. And, and then, you know. It's I a good a run. It's a pretty good yeah. run, you know. I mean, so, you know, I can't be unhappy. So, you know, you make, make a sort of mistake, you know, and, and you just got to live with it, you know. Well, it looked like really good fun out there. That's for sure. Oh, so it's great it been fun out there, Cara. <laughs> He's trying so hard right now. So hard. Thanks so much, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the Fitzwilliam Card Club, where the main event final table is underway. Let's get back to the action. A2 for Gary to call. That'll be folded straight away, I'm sure. Around to Sam. Oh, Sam has had a look down. Pocket Kings. 2.8 million. His Sam is there. certainly one of the guys at this table that could get a lot of action with his pocket kings because he has shown a propensity to uh, be prepared to step out without them, which uh, can work very much in your favour when you do pick up a big hand. Queen 10 suited for Nabean, who folds. Paul, 4 3 off suit, he'll fold. Around to Lee with ace 2 suited now. Similar stack size, 2.7. Lee is a guy playing with a lot of confidence. He's had a few big results in um, in Ireland over the last couple of years, both uh, at the end of the month at the Fitz and in uh, Larry Santos oh. tournaments. Kevin, who hasn't played much, is all in with his pocket sixes. Which, this is exactly what I was saying. I mean, the pocket sixes looks uh, pretty big against a player like, like Sam, who's prepared to uh, get out there. Kevin just thought he could move all in, and uh, he's only got 136,000 anyway. But yeah, it's a big thought thought it place a itself there, does not it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Kings against Sixes. Kevin won't be getting a lot of love from the table at this moment in time. I don't think he'd be getting <laughs> any love from the table at this moment in time. And the full house on the tour and <laughs> that's good night for Kevin for this year's poker festival. Well, he was short stacked and uh, picked up a pair of sixes, so kind of a uh, played itself. <laughs> not, a, not a great spot to pick to go all in. He's been a little bit on board, been very patient, but uh, he's just been a bit unlucky to come up against the Kings in that position. So Kevin bows out, and we're down to seven at the table now. Ice Jack suited for the band 40 to call. I'm sure there'll be small rays going in here from the band who's been very, very steady. Picked up a couple of nice stacks with his kings and pocket jacks. His stack size 660,000. But he's under the gun here. Taking his time. 
You'd imagine if the ship was going down and they were told to get in the lifeboats, <laughs> he'd be the last man off. <laughs> It's 90,000. Oh, oh. from Nepal, where I, I gather the people are pretty laid back, so uh, he's not letting oh. the side down oh, anyway. Absolutely not. Well, we'll have a look at this. He's run into the pocket rockets from Gary. This is it's a very small stack, yeah. Got about eight big blinds, so this is um, happy, happy days. What a time to pick up the aces. And the, the good news is that uh, Nabeen having raised him in early position is practically guaranteed to have a, a big hand here, and Gary's going to get on. Yeah, so it's ace jack suited against the pocket aces from Gary. Nabeen won't be happy, but still have possible outs possible flush draw I'd be hoping for to crack the aces here. Let's see what the flop gives. Any spades on the flop? No spades. Uh, but a possible straight draw. A nine or a king. Oh my god. There it is. He's uh, Ace Jack beats the aces. Yeah. Oh my. You know, if you're looking for justice, the poker table isn't the best place <laughs> no. to go. And, uh, wow. Well played, Gary, and uh, well done. And Nabeen knocks Gary out in seventh position. We are down to six as Gary heads off to talk to Kara Scott. Out in seventh place, uh, Gary, that was a pretty ugly situation you just dealt with there. How do you kind of shake that off? Oh, mute, glass while that's all that's happening to me, really. They're just coming time and time again, getting close, can't get over the line. Big pairs, absolutely killing me the last few months, so just have to keep on going. Some, sometimes you can't really, you know, say how the cards are going to come for you, but you're happy with how you played, the, you know, the situations you could actually control. Yeah, well, at this, when I started off at the final table, I made a bad play. Um, obviously, I think I should have called the king-queen as well when one did a gun raise with the fives, but other than that, I think I played really solid today and Friday as well. Oh, thanks for talking to us, appreciate it. God almighty, I'm mighty I've seen people swap a lot of drugs at the poker table, but lemon sippers and you one of the <laughs> Is that not under the band list? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably should be. <laughs> Lead with a six suited. Christine moves all in with her pocket sixes. 435,000. Lead 350,000 to call. I think Christine will get through here. I don't think Lee will see much uh, future in the A6. Oh, he calls with the A6 suited. And he did say uh, in his speech there that, that, he, that he thought he could be ahead. So. So there, there may be a bit of history between these two that we don't know about, but uh, it leaves obviously onto the fact that uh, Christine has got a few moves in her. Oh, she's all she's certainly not a stereotypical her. German female. Absolutely player. not. So let's see the flop. If there's no ace on the flop, she'd be very, very happy. Two jacks and a five. That's okay. This is great news for Christine. She can get herself up to, to the million mark if she gets this. Oh, a king here would be a nightmare for her. No, no missed. king and no ace. So Christine doubles up and wins a pot of 940,000 in chips. A very relieved Christine. Now being on the button here, Queen Jack suited, nice hand.
lines are 25.50. Well, so 500 queen jack suited on the buttons are pretty nice holding, especially if you've got, uh, you know, if Nabeen actually makes use of the table image that he's created so far and actually turns things upside down and starts playing more aggressive, he could steal a lot of pots before uh, people found out he had the gear change, but we will find out if he, if he does have that extra gear. He's ran into pocket sevens here with Paul on the small blind. I think Paul might play this quite conservatively because uh, even though Nabeen is on the button, um, so far I'm sure any hand that, that Paul has seen Nabeen show today has been, uh, I think Ace Jack is about the worst he's come up with. And he won with that. <laughs> <laughs> Lee gets out of the way. Yeah, you, you know, in the, in the modern games that were raised on the button there and, the, and sevens nice. in the blind, this would very often be a re-raise and that the, the seven, the guy with the sevens would assume the button's got nothing. But in this particular case, with the dynamics, uh, Paul had decided to play it uh, very cagely. And he's checked his set of sevens, which he's hit on the flop. A dangerous check, particularly if a ten comes on the turn. He's given Nabeen a free card here. Oh, close enough, but... Oh, that will Nabeen certainly is now see. drawn dead. Ten no good to Nabeen now because Paul already has the full house. He's checked again. Surely he has to bet here. Let's see what size bet. Maybe about 150. I don't think Paul is going to get any more chips out of this pot, whether we bet or check. I don't think uh, Nabeen has it uh, in his locker, as they say on the football yeah. shows, to come out with a bluff Would on the river. Would have been an interesting 10 on the river there <laughs> for Nabeen. Not a great card for him, but certainly a good card it would have been for Paul. Would have given Nabeen the straight, but of course Paul with the house certainly would have cashed in. I think we'll see a foul here from Nabeen. Doing a bit of Hollywood. Bit of Hollywood. Nice house shown from Paul there. Shown the house just for future reference. Raised. Rachel picks up ace queen suited and she raises. Thank you. To 160,000. This is good news for Rachel. She's been pretty card dead all day. She's got the double up at the Kings and uh, now she's right back in this. She's got just under a million in chips. She's picked up an ace queen. Everybody's folding around to me. It's the hardest big blind in the world to steal. <laughs> I've got 9 6 suits. It's all about throwing that away. Oh, what a flop for both players. Oh, something for everyone here, Ken. Rachel's Check. flopped the top pair, and uh, Lee has flopped the flush, though. Be interesting to see how he plays it. Bet. Yeah, Lee checks the flop. Rachel's and he's moved Rachel. all in, and an instant call, it looks like, from Rachel. This isn't bad news for Rachel, because, you know, uh, two times out of three, she'd double up here and get her stack up to two million. Pair, oh, but, but this is the third oh. time out of the three, I'm afraid. Lee hits the flush on the torn and Rachel will be very disappointed. Top player on the flop and as you said, she goes out in sixth position and we're down to five. Rachel's our sixth place finisher, so Rachel, I mean it's never great to go out on the final table, so talk to us about this. Uh, bit of a sick beat, um, raise it up with ace queen, ace high flop, got a call pre-flop with nine six of clubs and Flop the flush draw, hit it on the turn. So, ugh, it's uh, it's good to get here to the final table anyway and be one of the regular players and free rolled in anyway. So, welcome back to the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club, where the main event final table is underway and all the players have their eye on the prize. Let's get back to the action. Please. Oh. 
cold. Lee with a five suited here. Yep. Christine, <laughs> pocket sevens. Just cold. Okay. The raise here. She's seen her going in, all in with with less than that in previous hands. Sam asked him for a count. Must have a decent hand, or is he just playing a little bit of mind games here? Paul falls his 10 9, back around to Lee with 8 5 suit. Well, Sam has got the re raise in with the ace jack. Basically telling me I don't care if you're raising under the gun. Well, Christine fouled the best hand there, but it would have been a race with the ace jack. And Sam, Julie, takes down the pot as Christine folds. Moving on to hand 195. <coughs> Line still 25.50 with a run and ante of 5,000. The bean 50,000 to call. Thanks, nine off suited. Stack of 720,000. The raise here. Raise. Come on. fresh air, man. <laughs> Looking for a bit of fresh air. You don't get any fresh air at that poker table. And looking for a little break, Sam, as he can, he can take a break. He has to leave his chips at the table. The two tradition of Irish poker to take it having a break to go for a pint. <laughs> Suit me. <coughs> Lee calls. Looking to call here. Doesn't lay down many hands. No, it's a pretty loose call from Lee. I mean, uh, against Nabeen. Well, whether he's in small blind or big blind, he doesn't like letting the blinds go. And uh, have a look at this. What a flop for Lee Egan here. Ace nine for Nabeen. Must think he's in the lead here. Lee has flopped a you've, set of threes. You've seen a lot worse flops than that for a pair <laughs> of an ace nine. So will he find the continuation bet? It is. bet. And that's more or less what he's supposed to do. Just uh, this particular case, he's uh, betting himself right into a world of trouble. Right. Lee's got a big stick here. I think he's made a fairly reasonable assumption that um, Sam may well have a, an overpair here and uh, can get him to put all his chips into the pot. I mean, um, most of the time, from what we've seen in the bean, uh, an overpair is exactly what he'd have. Nabeen counting his chips. Is he going to call? If he calls, I give up. <laughs> I should have done that a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving him the big stare. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> He's looking, no, looking no, around the world like he's sitting no, there with, two, with tens or jacks. I think he's done it's polishing, for, polishing <laughs> the head for the day. <laughs> Very tiring. It's a fold. Let me catch. No fault. I can take off my hoodie, but I'm too fucking superstitious, you know? I've had it on for three days. What's this? I'm too hot, but I could take this off, but I'm too superstitious to take it off. <laughs> No, unfortunately, I'm not joking. Does he not know that it's unlucky to be superstitious? <laughs> no, I 
I felt okay. last night. I felt it was necessary to change sound effects. Right. Okay. The, the socks now, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to know at least he changed his underpants. Yeah. The jacket is staying off and the socks are staying off. We're yeah. <laughs> getting a little bit too much detail here. <laughs> now, being all in with A7 offsuited, he's going to run into Paul, who I'm sure he well, well, with it, with, with will oblige. Seven, I mean, that's a... Uh, Certainly the correct play from the bean. He's just been a bit unlucky. He's uh, going to run, run slap bang into the ace queen behind him. <coughs> Lee has actually folded the suit of connectors here. But Paul has now been dominated. Ace queen against ace seven. And the bean got out of trouble before with the ace jack against the aces. This is. That's what I was thinking. This one should be easy. Such a nice hand Both players still an ace. Ace queen still ahead, of course. Um, now look for the bean as he bows out in fifth position. Nice play, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Naveen, you came into the final table lowest stacked, so I mean, is it kind of bittersweet? It's not a bad result here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's yeah. not. I enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. What's the experience been like over the last few days here at the Fitz? Uh, it's, uh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice because it's a local club, you know, like interaction is good and yeah. uh, everything. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bit of a home game as well, true, yeah. right? Yeah. There's a, a lot of players that you you guys play together a bit. Yeah. True, yeah. 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 Well, congratulations on a final table and uh, commiserations on busting out. Thank you so much. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> what can you do? This is, there's nothing you can do. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're down to four. One lady left, who's Christine Mashman from Germany, but living in Ireland for a number of years now. Can't see her going home. She seems to fit in fairly well around here. A regular in the fits. I mean, uh, I mean, the Fitz players have done the club proud, Ken, haven't they? Fantastic. I mean, so many of the Fitz uh, regulars went really deep in this. She's picked up pocket tens here. And, uh, and she's gone all in, 790,000. Paul with Queen Jack has folded. And Lee, who has pocket aces. And how unlucky is this for Christine? Oh, my God. No. Run into pocket aces. Four to one underdog here to hit a possible ten. An eight would be interesting. Oh, a jack even. No good on the river. And Christine, who has been very unlucky, but what a fantastic performance to get down to the last four. But she bows out in fourth place to Lee Egan. Out in fourth place, I spoke to you a little bit earlier. We were talking about how this was, you know, one of the places where you came and were first playing poker. So talk to us about this experience for you. It was still great. Yeah. You know, obviously, like I had, I had this weird little goal for this year that I win a poker tournament. Obviously, it's stupid to make that a goal, but um, I was like, why not make it this one? You know, and I make it really far. Um, and I, I hung on like really like <laughs> I shouldn't have been there even. So this was just unlucky, but I think it was uh, deserved that I finally bow out. Yeah. Well, the year's not quite over yet, so hopefully you make your goal and win the tournament, yeah? Still have a few tournaments to go, so let's see. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us. Yes. So down to three players. Lee. Chip stack's Asian. pretty even. Yeah. Uh, 30,000 for the winner, 18 for second, and 10,250 for third. Which so it's quite serious expensive. Cabbage. It's a serious difference between, you know, second toward first and second, of course, as well. At this stage of the competition, though, with just three left, Boric, what would be your sort of, what would be your philosophy here? 
Uh, I, I would err on the, on the side of violence. <laughs> and, uh, oh. Normally, for, fortune favours the brave in these uh, situations. Certainly over time, yeah. The more aggressive player tends to uh, come to the top more often. Well, you've five. talked about more aggressive. Here's a re-raise to Paul's 135. It's quite a surprising re-raise yeah. because Paul hasn't exactly been uh, shifting his chips around the place all day. So of the three of them, he'd be the guy least likely to be raising without a hand at this stage. But uh, bet. great flop. Sam must have Paul, picked up yeah. something. And, uh, Sam bets out 225,000, but Paul has got a lot of this flop, as you can see. Raise. Flush draw, and he's re raised Sam now to 600,000. That should probably be the end of this. Oh, Sam has all called in. all in for the rest what? of his. 2.2 million in chips oh, and an no. instant call from Paul. He's asked a very serious question there. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is still in the lead here, but Paul has got a lot of outs. Any spade will do here. But certainly doesn't want runner runner spade. Oh, Queen on the Torn. Has increased oh, Paul's <laughs> chance. Only a king will do and a two on diamonds on the river. The Queen was like a stake through the heart for Sam, and played the part uh, very, very aggressively. Yeah, I think the three women have gone over well. Yeah, uh, so let me know, because the cards are fucked Yeah, take on the second, yeah. So Sam goes out, and he will walk away with 10,250 euros for his troubles. And, and a bad beat story. And a bad beat story. From the 230 players who started, we're down to the final two. We are heads up here. So who takes home the trophy, the title, and the big money? Who has the luck of the Irish tonight? Let's find out. Based. We're down to two players now. Paul Kyo and Lee Egan. 12,000, the difference between second and first. Cut. Yeah, 30,000 to the winner. And of course, the title of the festival champion 2016. Get his name on the trophy alongside uh, last year's champion uh, Andy Black, who put up a great defence this year. Two hundred and forty. Top pair here on the seven as Lee bets in two hundred and forty thousand to him. Oh, Possible mm -hmm. straight draw for Lee here. Oh, Lee has. Just gone into the lead with the eight on the torn. Yeah, Paul uh, played it a little tricky going for the check raise there, but he's run straight into it. Mm. Paul won't believe that he's behind here. Oh, well, he does believe oh. he's behind. That's he actually Julie. to avoid a bit of a shipwreck there in the last hand. Lines up 30,000, 60,000. This is hand 210, as you can see there. Race, 155. Lee, who has been the more aggressive of the two players at this final oh, table part. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. You know, he, he had the chip lead with 27 left, and he's been uh, putting those chips to work for the, for the last several hours. Been a long night here. I think he's had about three dinners. <laughs> yeah. It was an eating competition. <laughs> I think he'd given him the trophy already. Seven two suited all of spades. The, uh, <laughs> and of course the case of the heads up for it, you, you sort of it normally comes down to two sort of half decent hands together, isn't it? Just sort of colliding. Yeah, when it heads up anything can happen because uh, generally speaking if, if two good players are playing heads up neither of them ever believes the other guy. Yeah. And they'd normally be right. Race. 155. Paul. 
Lee hits the seven on the flop. Paul calls. Two hundred bet. Call. Raises two hundred. Lee calls. And now, possible bit, bit straight draw. Bit of a for Paul there. He's Check. a. Check. Oh my God. Oh wow. Oh, Paul has hit the straight Check. with the nine on the river. Three hundred bet. <laughs> and uh, Lee believes in good fold, Lee. You know, I don't think in this head that, uh, that, that Lee is expecting Paul to uh, to bluff him. Yeah. But, but Paul is fully expecting Lee to be at it all the time, so it, it creates for an interesting dynamic. I mean, I think Lee thinks that uh, if Paul bets that he's, uh, he's being reasonably honest. Whereas uh, if Lee bets, I mean, it's very difficult to figure out what's going on, <laughs> even if you're looking at his cards like we are. <laughs> and Lee has them this time, ace-10 suited, huge hand, of course, and a heads up. And Paul calls with the 9-4 of hearts. Lee and hits the 10 on maybe the flop. getting a bit frustrated here. It's a bit of an unusual oh. call with the 9-4. Like maybe maybe he called to bluff but, uh, and then changed his mind. <laughs> Fully entitled to. Lee now with 6.6 .6 million in chips and Paul down to 2.8 million from over 5.6 million at one stage. These two would know each other very well, of course, of playing in the It's great, isn't it? I mean, they keep asking each other questions without, without <laughs> asking a question. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're all digging for information <laughs> all the time. Check A for Paul Come. here. Oh, we have an all-in and a call. Wow, a huge all-in from Lee. Paul King raises three the clubs. Lee's had a king, you know, Straight heads up an ace so of a king is a pretty strong hand. I don't think he was expected to get called. Oh my god. Okay. Wow. He hits the tour oh with king tree suited <laughs> and Lee Eagle <laughs> takes down <laughs> this championship and what a fantastic championship it's been. With okay. king tree suited against the jack eight suited and what a hand to take it down. We finally have our 2016 main event champion here at the Fitzwilliam. Our second place finisher though, Paul, I mean, it was a pretty incredible tournament. We spoke earlier as well about the whole experience. So coming second is bittersweet. Talk to me about how you feel about all this. I feel great, yeah. really do. I played well the whole night, three days. I played very well. Lee's deserving champion. He played very well, but um, he done very well. Fair play to him. It's a tough old heads up as well. Now, Lee, you are the champion. What kind of bragging rights does that have a around the club here? It's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> I rather, I rather the top didn't the money, nice. and it was uh, pretty good to put me in the lead. Now I'm top of the Irish rankings as well, so I'm pretty happy. Oh, I bet you are. Any plans for the, you know, the money? You've got the big check as well. Maybe got the Prague and twice been open the APT. Right. That's the plans. A little bit more poker maybe for you. Well, congratulations, a, w a worthy champion. I'm going to give you this. Oh, it's really heavy, actually. Here, you're, you're stronger than I am. Pick that up. Well done to the 2016 main event champion. Well, that's all from us here. On behalf of myself, Kara Scott, the commentators, Porg Parkinson and Ken Doherty, and everyone here at the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club, thanks for joining us. Make sure to be back here in 2017 for more poker at the Fitz.